Thank you, Dr. S. Todd Yuri, one of Doug's most beloved students, most respected students. He serves as the senior pastor at Douglas Memorial Community Church and is an adjunct professor in the College of Public Affairs at the University of Baltimore. And I have been so blessed to go to Dr. Yuri's services a few times at Douglas Memorial. On the first Sunday of the month they are, and to hear him speak is such a pleasure and really enlivening. His message is clear and powerful, and so we are so lucky he is here today. In the three short years he graduated, he graduated in 2020, and Reverend Todd has become one of the most prominent civil rights attorneys of the day. He represents victims of police brutality in Atlanta, Chicago, and New York, and Maryland, and speaks for others whose constitutional rights have been violated. Thank you so much for being here, Reverend. if you want to tell me the whole stage is mine. I'm not sure uh, that that's, 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 that's wise. Well, good day to all of you. Uh, one, let me start by expressing my thanks uh, for the great privilege of sharing with you on this holy day. Um, as I'm considering where it falls within the trajectory of my own life, it is a great early birthday present as tomorrow is my birthday. So I feel pretty, pretty blessed to be able to share with you. Uh, let me also thank you, Rabbi Emily, for your, your blessing and for your friendship and for your encouragement. And certainly uh, I have to acknowledge uh, Dean Donald Tobin. Uh, he's no longer the, the, acting, the, the, the active dean of the law school, but he was certainly uh, the one that was kind of the, uh, the gatekeeper who watched over me for uh, my period of matriculation at Maryland Law. I ended up in law school because uh, your, uh, your faithful colleague and congregant, um, Doug Colbert, got me in trouble. I was having a conversation. It was actually a conversation about justice. Uh, and in the course of our doing some work together advocating for justice here in the state of Maryland, a crazy idea popped into his head and resonated in my heart that I should, in my own midlife crisis, decide that I wanted to go to law school at night while pastoring. Um, and having the opportunity to sit in his classroom and to learn from him what you hear from him here is actually what many students, many of us, have heard from him uh, in the halls of Cary Law School. As we were listening to the readings and considering what is the meaning of this day, the notion that we could go through routine, rudimentary, disconnected, motions of ritual and not incorporate what we say into what we do and how we live is the ultimate failure I think we see particularly from um, some of the traditions that claim an affinity to longing to be connected with God to separate the two, as I was reading the comments that are in our study this morning, I think is the ultimate demonstration of insincerity. If we want to be connected to God, connected with God, we must be concerned about those things that concern God. I heard as we were just singing the prophet Micah. Who can miss that admonition? What does God require of us after we have convened together and 
sung together and prayed together, but to go back into a world that is unjust and do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. I didn't realize what I was getting myself into listening to Doug Colbert. But I think I found actually an interesting, Rabbi Emily, extension of my work as a pastor that what I say on Sunday now must be embodied on Monday. And so this longing, this zeal to enter into the presence of a God who is so mysterious that the more we think we know, the more we realize we do not know, which keeps us ever searching. The way we find confirmation is in moments like these. We really do need each other. And if we don't hold on to each other, all of our efforts to demonstrate our longing for the presence of God falls short. Here, if, if, if this were a moment, one, let me suggest to you the two things that you do not do with a preacher from the African-American church tradition is give him an open mic and a congregation. <laughs> <laughs> and since I know I'm on time, let me just kind of leave this here and to say again, thank you. Will you just look at someone in your vicinity and say, I need you? Just look at them, just say, I need you. Tell them, tell them, I need you. I cannot do what I am tasked to do without you. You cannot do what you are tasked to do without me. And if we are going to enjoy being in the presence of a wonderfully mysterious and all-knowing God, we got to do it together. And in this day and time, with all of this separation and division, we got to figure out how to have more moments like these. Outside these walls, beyond these doors, is a world that's hurting. Not just from the effects of injustice. You heard Professor Colbert talk about the, the criminal legal system. It's not really the criminal justice system. We, we still trying to get justice there. When you can do time, without conviction. You can find yourself incarcerated because you have no money. When you can find yourself isolated because no one responds to your cries for help. Or you can be in the comfort of your own reality and be so disconnected from the opportunity that God is giving to us in this moment to actually be about the business of God I think we find ourselves in a most miserable state. Our call when we leave this place, and let me thank you, I'm telling you, September 25th will always mean something because you all have given me permission and prayer to go out and do the work of creating the world that I imagine in my dreams and I've read about in the appeals from scripture, but I also take you with me when I go into the courtrooms and the hearing rooms across the country where laws are passed and enforced against the interest of God's people and to recognize the, the conversation, Rabbi, about the, the two goats. This is a day in the Christian tradition we often identify it as the Day of Atonement. The day when the breach in the relationship between God and God's people because of the people's indifference to injustice has to be repaired. Someone must pay the price and give their life completely 
and the other must be willing to accept the blame. So I go with that assignment seriously and prayerfully and humbly and gratefully. And I say to you, I need you. Otherwise, I will not be able to find the connection with God that my soul longs for. Thank you for being community. Thank you for being committed. Thank you for being praying people. Pray for me as I pray for you. Rabbi Emily, thank you for giving me an open mic <laughs> and a loving congregation to share with on this day. I pray the full blessings of a God so mysterious until he could orchestrate this moment without our awareness. To that God, I pray that God will bless you and keep you until we come together again. Thank you. <laughs>